been recently announced that Qualcomm bought out Arduino. Does that mean the little 8-bit modules are going away? Well, years ago, my Chapino module that I designed for PIC users to share shields with Arduino, well, it didn't quite make it, but the open source keeps it alive. Will open source keep the Arduino Uno alive? Let's talk about it right here at CHEP, Chuck Hullabuck's Electronic Products. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. So Qualcomm recently announced that they're buying Arduino. They're taking over Arduino. Now Arduino was an open source platform. It was designed to be used in colleges to make it easier for people to learn programming. That's why it's called a sketch, not a program. It's for everyone to use electronics and it used 8-bit microcontrollers. Now, of course, we've moved on to 32-bit and everything, but there's still a place for these guys. But what really made Arduino special is that it was open source. So anyone could build their own. You could build shields for it. And it just exploded. And plus, hobbyists all over the world started using it. So it wasn't just a college tool anymore. But let me take you back, way back into the history of how all this came about. And it starts with this, the basic stamp. This is about, I don't know, maybe 30 years old, 25 years old. But Parallax, a company, came out with the basic stamp. And it had a PIC microcontroller on it and external memory. And you would program it with a little three-pin connector cable that actually went to the parallel port on your computer. That's how old this is. This is the parallel ports where we connected the printer for our computers. Well, they were communicating through that and basically kind of like a bootloader communicating with the basic stamp. You would write your program into an IDE, similar to what Arduino has, but you would write it in basic, real simple basic commands, basic syntax, and it would convert it into the ones and zeros that would run on the basic stamp. Actually, there's a tokenizer. It would send the tokens in that the code was actually on EEPROM, so this thing would fetch and retrieve, fetch and retrieve, <laughs> like interpreted basic. But you could control all kinds of little things. People were so excited about this. This became the favorite hobbyist little module. And in fact, schools were using this to teach electronics for a number of years. So that basic language that it used became very, very popular. And PIC, the PIC microcontroller, became very popular. So I used this for years, but I didn't like the fetch and retrieve and the slowness of it. Well, then out came PIC Basic Compiler, where you could take your basic stamp program and compile it into just the ones and zeros, so it ran a lot faster, but then you needed to program the microcontroller directly, not through the basic stamp. And there's a lot of steps in there, but eventually I made my own modules. Now this is a Chapino, which came a little later, but I made my own modules that you could program with a programmer, like a Picket 2. And so you could program the microcontroller directly with code basic stamp. Now in a parallel to that, colleges were trying to teach C programming, but it wasn't easy to do. So that's where the Arduino team came up with the Uno. It used commands similar to the basic stamp, but converted them into, or they were in C format. And then it would convert it into the ones and zeros so you could program this. And this uses a bootloader similar to what the basic stamp did. And this took off. This was huge. Plus, it was open source. So people could make shields for it. They could make their own Arduinos. And so the hobbyists started using this instead of the basic stamp and instead of PIC. So AVR basically took over. Now inside the Uno is an AVR microcontroller. And at the time, AVR competed with PIC. So you were either kind of an AVR guy or you were a PIC guy. And once they switched to AVR, all those PIC projects that were out there kind of faded away. Well, I was a PIC user. I wanted to use the shields. I wanted all the capabilities that the Uno had while I learned Arduino, but I still wanted to be able to use all my tools and everything. So I created Chapino. Chapino is PIN compatible with the Uno, so I could use all the shields, but I could program a PIC microcontroller. So this is what I designed, but not with a bootloader. The idea is you can use any 28-pin PIC, and there's thousands of them out there, and you just program it directly with a programmer, like a Picket 2. And there's now a Picket 3, Picket 4, Picket 5. There's, it's advanced. 
and I designed this module to grow with it. So this will still work with pick a two, pick a three, pick a four, pick a four, whatever. And you can use any of the latest microcontrollers. And because everything is open source, including the Picket 2 is open source, there's guys out there that took the software for the Picket 2 and they updated it. So now you can program all the latest PIC devices with the Picket Plus software. I think it's like $25 or $30. But now you can bring an old Picket 2 open source design and bring it up to program all the latest devices. So Chapino was designed to grow with the technology. I was just trying to get interest because the name Chapino is key. It's not just a copy of Arduino. See, there's a soup called Chapino, spelled differently, but it's a community soup. And the whole idea was all the fishermen would go out, bring back their catch of the day, and then donate a little bit to the community soup. That soup was called Chapino. And I thought, why couldn't I do the same thing with electronics? Or I put this out there. But everyone can now contribute to make Chapino better. So it's like a community module. I did my best to promote Chapino. It was before YouTube or Kickstarter or anything like that. I would go to the maker fairs, and my father-in-law built this prop that I would put in front of my booth. I had banners for Chapino. I even had books. Um, this is my Embedded C Programming Volume 3 book. It has Chapino and Chapino projects in it. I've had, actually, on the channel, 3D prints for Chapino, because I still use it. It's like my private Arduino. There's a few schools that were using it for a while, but for the most part, I shelved it. But Arduino, as you know, just became so popular. In fact, it became the guts of the circuit boards in our 3D printers. The early 3D printers ran Arduino. But actually, the original RepRap machine used a pick. So the first 3D printers, first RepRap machine, was actually run by a PIC, but then eventually went to Arduino. So that's part of the reason I got into 3D printing, because I love the fact that I could control a 3D printer with an 8-bit microcontroller similar to Arduino. And eventually, of course, I learned how to program Arduino. I even wrote a book about it. Now, some will say we have 32-bit, 8-bit is dead. But if you look at a serial LCD module or a smart sensor, odds are there's a little chip inside handling the I2C to control the LCD or to read that sensor. That little chip inside is probably an 8-bit microcontroller. So thankfully, Arduino open sourced everything with the 8-bit. So this will live on through the clones and everything else, no matter what the Qualcomm purchase does. In fact, a lot of my Chapino files are available. It's open sourced. So it's out there, and that's the beauty of open source. So even though Qualcomm is going to buy it, and Arduino will probably become more of a 32-bit and computer-based platform similar to Raspberry Pi. I think that's kind of where they're heading. The 8-bit stuff will live on. So people like me who want to fool with the simple stuff or any schools or organizations that want to do 8-bit type programming, which to me is a great way to enter into electronics, open source allows that to continue. If you ever access those open source files and want to build your own Arduino or build your own Shield, I recommend PCBWay.com. Most of my circuit boards, my shields, my archipinos have all been manufactured by PCBWay.com. And I can get 10 boards for $5 plus shipping. I just upload my Gerber files, make a few selections. It gives me an instant quote. From there, they review the files, let me know they're good to manufacture. So I click buy, and then they ship them to me. But they're not just circuit boards. They offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. I highly recommend PCBWay.com. They're a great supporter of the channel. So check them out, PCBWay.com. So I know a lot of my audience shows up to learn about 3D printing, but I also have a big chunk of my audience that likes electronics too. And so if you're one of those people and you've been using Arduino, what's your thoughts on the Qualcomm purchase of Arduino? Let me know in the comments below. I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who make all this possible. Thank you for your support. So if you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do that. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here. Thanks for watching.